What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Having Report Podcast with myself, your host, Brad Mines. There are 508 days left until the next Bitcoin halving. The price of Bitcoin is 19.5 thousand US dollars. That is the exact same price we reported a week ago on our last episode. However, the US stock market continues to decline. Has Bitcoin and crypto found its bottom? Today, we welcome Toronto, Canada's own Ashley Wright to the show. Ashley is a self-starter entrepreneur who combined her passion for self-branding and education with her passion of cryptocurrency. She is the founder of The Right Success and the Crypto Babes Club. Before we get to today's show, shout out to our partner at BitBuy. If you are Canadian and you haven't already, go to bitbuy.ca forward slash having for a free $20 in Canadian fiat after depositing your first $250, which can be used to purchase many different types of cryptocurrencies. So quick and easily at bitbuy.ca forward slash having. Ashley Wright, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for coming on to the Having Report podcast. Yes, super excited. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be a part of this conversation. You're doing a lot of great work. I appreciate you saying that. Maybe you could give us an introduction for yourself and how you got into the cryptocurrency space. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I got into crypto about 2017, about the beginning. Um, And that's where I literally just started off investing, dived into trading a little bit as well, and really just fell in love with the space. And I'm like, you know what, I want to take this passion that I have with crypto and pair it up with what I believe is my purpose, which is to help people. So I decided to become an educator, uh, where I'm, of course, being able to work with people, help them learn how to get in the right way. Um, And so I launched the Crypto Strategy Academy which is a full cohort based program teaching people like how to invest, how to trade, all these crypto trends. Um, and then a little bit later, I also launched the uh, crypto babes community as well. So helping women get into Web3, whether it's like finding, you know, jobs or building companies within the space. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, you mentioned, you know, the, the Crypto Strategy Academy. Uh, maybe I was wondering if you could delve a little bit deeper into that for us and, you know, what it looks like, how one can get started with that. Yeah. So um, the Crypto Strategy Academy is totally virtual. Um, so everything is online. And yes, I am based here in Toronto. However, I do have a lot of students uh, internationally as well as well as throughout the U.S. So I um, have a good presence in, in different in different countries, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, the Academy is, is fully virtual. We go through like seven weeks going over like the beginning of like how do you start investing, creating your portfolio, you know, researching different cryptocurrencies to, you know, how do you actually start trading, demo account, um, taking your first few trades or doing your market analysis. Um, and then wrap it up by talking about the crypto trends that are happening. So like NFTs, DeFi, and all that exciting stuff. It's a lot of content. <laughs> yeah, that is a lot of content. And, you know, for somebody new coming into the space, I, I bet it's overwhelming. I, I know a lot of people come into the space mm-hmm. through some of the new trends, but then there's other people that are, you know, a little bit curious about Bitcoin. And then they then, then they kind of get overwhelmed with all those uh, other topics and, you know, side cryptocurrency subs, uh, you know, what, what would you say is the biggest hurdle for some of your newcomers or your, your pupils coming into the space? What are some of the biggest challenges or misconceptions that they may have? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge is probably just to stay focused <laughs> because there's so many different stuff happening, different trends. And then you have like fa- fr- uh, friends and family and different people on social media and YouTube that are always telling you about different coins or the next, you know, Bitcoin or whatever. Right. So staying focused, as simple as it may sound, is actually probably the hardest thing um, to do um, and kind of, you know, letting FOMO like not, I guess, falling into that as well and allowing yourself to just be patient with it. Um, and then in terms of any other hurdles, I would say probably just lack of education, I think is the biggest thing where people like I still talk to people today that are like, man, I can't get into Bitcoin because I don't have, have you know enough funds to buy a whole one. And I'm like, you can actually just mm-hmm. invest in a fraction. But a lot of people don't even know that simple fact. Right. So a lot of it is just like education and knowing like what's right from wrong. Um, and then, of course, deciding who to trust with all these like crypto coaches that are out here. Hit it right, bingo, right on there when you said that uh, you don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. And I think that's a huge one. And I remember there was like a Twitter discussion about it or somebody had asked that on Twitter. And that's what I said. And it was by far the most upvoted that a lot of people agree with that. So uh, I definitely agree with you there. Uh, And you mentioned trading a lot too. 
Uh, I personally stay away from the trading. You know, obviously hindsight's 2020. I probably should have sold at the top when Bitcoin and everything else was Bitcoin was at 69,000 and everything, everything was, you know, uh, on the moon, as they say, uh, you know, how much trading should a new person coming into this space do? Uh, I know, I know, I think if I'm not mistaken, I saw you promote, you know, being able to enter, but also exit crypto. What are your thoughts around that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I definitely get where you're coming from. Trading is, it's it can be on the aggressive side and it can be scary to be very like transparent right because the markets are so volatile so uh, when it comes to trading and like what the strategy looks like i always say it depends on the person because everybody has different goals everybody has a different risk level right and different strategies that they're going to want to use as a trader some people like to trade like on a day-to-day -day basis where they're taking lots of you know they have a lot of positions and they're taking a lot of trades in one day you know, versus someone like myself, right? I'm really focused on like trading and capitalizing on those big moves in the market, right? Now, when I say big moves, it's not like you have to wait for like Bitcoin to go up like five or ten thousand dollars, right? But there's bigger moves um, that you can still profit on, pros, pro profit off of, even if it goes up or down like a couple thousand dollars, which is really nice. So, um, kind of just depends on what style of trading that person likes and and that's where like having a demo account which you know literally looks like the real thing but it's just fake money but that's where that comes to place you can, you can practice you know how do i get in how do i get out how do i you know pr uh, protect my capital right um that i have in my trading account as well yeah what what's a good free demo account would you say do you know many platforms that kind of let you you know buy and sell and actually like with fake money or how do you suggest people go about doing that? Yeah. So, um, there is a lot of different styles of trading. The one that I really like is more like the leverage trading side. So using something like MetaTrader 4, um, as an example, and um, when it comes to creating like a demo account, you're going to need a broker, which is going to be like that middleman between like your trading account, as well as, um, the market itself. So, um, of course, please do your own research. But one of the brokers that I like to use specifically here in Canada and Toronto is called Hugo's Way. Um, yeah, they've been very efficient, very effective. And yeah, they have an option where you're able to create a demo account for those platforms. You're able to start practicing. And then when you're ready, same process, you're able to use them to create a live account, which is really nice. Um, and you can load your account with crypto and withdraw crypto too, which is really cool too. Super cool. We'll have to check that out. Uh, now, I know you're very um, up to date on the latest trends in the blockchain and cryptocurrency space, but do you hold any of the Bitcoin libertarian ideals such as separation of the money in the state and you know sovereign wealth? Yeah, to be honest with you, I... Do you want to put it out there? I'm not like a Bitcoin maxi for sure. I'm all about diversification. So I love like all these other altcoins because at the end of the day, like the way that I look at it is I understand like what Bitcoin really is um, and it being a store value. But at the same time, looking at it from a growth perspective, as well as being able to really monetize like I've seen cryptocurrencies like altcoins that have moved a lot faster that have made a lot more profits on than Bitcoin. Right. So once again, it's like there are, you know, of course, people have like the things that they live by when it comes to some of these things in the space. But for me, I'm all about diversification and really just using crypto as a way to create wealth. Right. Even like aside from you kind of mentioned earlier, like I've been talking about like how to exit crypto, like no one's talking about that. And one of the things, too, is like even though like crypto is a way to create wealth, the whole ideology that I have behind it is to use this, make some profits, take those profits put it into like real estate, put it into other areas that can multiply your income. So that's how I look at it. But, um, and then also to your point too, like when it comes to like the tech side, like that's a whole nother ball game. We get into blockchain as well and opportunities in that space. Well, I could definitely agree with you that diversification is a strong strategy. Uh, now you are also the co a co-founder of the Crypto Babes Club. What is the Crypto Babes Club? And is there a lack of women in the cryptocurrency space? Yeah, so I'm so excited. So yeah, we, we uh, created this community um, specifically for women that are looking to, of course, learn about the space, but even more so being able to connect them to opportunities. So connecting them to like job opportunities, funding, mentorship, right? Or even for those that want to maybe create something or start building in the space as well, right? Whether it's from like the development side 
or whether it's just like a business in the industry. So that's really what our focus is, um, being able to bring or connect women to those type of opportunities. In terms of like diversity as a whole in the space, you definitely have some work to do. Um, there are a lot of really great like women that are in the space that are doing some really great things, but I still think that there's some work to do in terms of getting more women involved into this space. And so that's why we created Crypto Babes, right? To be able to create a safe space, a community. Um, I'm happy to say we do have some guys that also, you know, support us and join some of our initiatives and events and, and calls. And we need we need allies regardless. So I'm always about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of what the community is about and what we're focused on. We are everywhere, I like to say. Most of the events we've been hosting have been in the U.S., so around like some of the bigger conferences, Bitcoin Miami and so forth. And then we just had our first one here in Toronto a few months back. So I'm excited and definitely looking to do some more here in Toronto. Awesome. Yeah. So I was at the Blockchain Futures Conference. I'm pretty sure you were there as well. Uh, that was that was pretty fun. It was my first one. Have you been before or is was that your first experience as well? Yeah, so um, fortunately, I had the opportunity to attend Futurist right before COVID happened. Um, and it was amazing. Same venue, same place. Um, wasn't as, you know, uh, wasn't as packed as before as this last yeah. one. But yeah, same, really, really great vibe. And so I'm happy that we we're finally able to have it again. Always good energy. It's like usually for these crypto conferences, you have to like go to the US. You have to go internationally. But to have one here at home is, is special. Absolutely. It was, it was a really fun time. Um, and, you know, great for networking. You know, I've, def I've had a couple people from the, from the, from the conference coming onto the show now, uh, yourself included, which is pretty cool. Do you have any upcoming events that you're excited about? Yeah, I definitely do. So the next one, I'm actually doing like a masterclass. Um, it's going to be live. It's going to be in Toronto, a beautiful rooftop space. That one's going to be on the 29th of September. And that one's all about strategy. So like how to enter the market, how to monetize it, and then how to get out successfully, <laughs> which I think once again, people are not talking about it. And I think a lot of people lost a lot of money during this dip because they didn't have an exit strategy, right? So yeah, that's the next thing that's on the radar. Um, and then there's a lot of conferences that I'll be speaking at or attending. Some of them that are not necessarily crypto conferences, um, but are more tech related. And those are all going to be here in the city as well. So yeah, lots of different stuff happening. Um, but yeah, what about yourself? Uh, I have no planned crypto events at this time. What was your thoughts around the uh, ETH merge? So it is something, I, I, once again, not financial advice, but I'm very big on ETH. Mm. ETH is bay, I like to say. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. it was it was something I was really excited about for sure. Um, because anything that can help Ethereum in terms of like, of course, adoption, as, as well as like the fees and kind of solve some of the issues that they're having, I'm all for it. So, you know, there's still like, I don't think it went 100% as planned, right? They're still kind of getting through and kind of smoothing, uh, smoothing the process a little bit, which is to be expected, like you're doing something that's so different that literally is changing the way that it's been run for how long now, right? So yeah, I am really excited about it. I think it's, it's still purposeful and still needed. Um, I'm just kind of looking forward to the day where everything with ETH is just running smoothly and we can really start to see it kind of hit the numbers <laughs> that we really expect and, and expect it to hit, you know? I saw you posted something about Kim Kardashian being, I think, fined or, or she settled with the SEC over a million dollars lawsuit or uh, settlement there for promoting, uh, I forget what type of token, ETH, ETH something, I think it was Ethereum related, ETH Max, maybe I want to say. Uh, what are your thoughts around that? And are we going to see more of that, do you think, with other celebrities that hyped cryptocurrencies during the bull run? Uh, yeah, no, no, I think... I'm not surprised that we're seeing that type of um, accountability. I'm actually, I'm happy about that because at the end of the day, like a lot of people are losing a lot of money. And my issue is not like when it comes to influencers talking about or promoting things within the space, it just depends what it is. So when it comes to like specific cryptocurrencies, it's basically, if you're promoting that, you're literally asking for trouble, <laughs> right? Uh, but if you're talking about like a platform or maybe something more of like a service or system that you're getting paid for, it's a little bit better, but it's just like within this space, like there's too many people losing money and there's so many scams that you have to be careful, right? So I think we're going to continue when it comes to the regulation piece. I think we're going to continue to see stuff like this. We've already had like tons of other celebrities or executives that have, you know, been caught doing this or promoting this or that, right? That are 
you know, finally being held accountable. So it's good, it's necessary, and it's needed because when we have, you know, things like Dogecoin that just goes up like this because mm-hmm. of a tweet, like, like people lose p- p- people for whatever reason for their life savings into this. So it's like we need that accountability so people know, like, hey, like they're getting paid to say these things, right? Uh, what, what do you think about regulation in Canada? Do you think it's in a good spot right now, or what would you like to see happen? Yeah. Oh gosh, Canada. <laughs> Canada is uh, is 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 very is has been very strict for the most part, right? Um, we saw that you know they cracked down on some of the exchanges, right? One of my favorite platforms used to be something like Binance, right? You used to go on there, and be able to purchase crypto, trade, uh, and they really just locked that down, right? So we had that, and then we had more announcements of you know now how them regulating how much money you can put into the cryptocurrency space, right? Which I have like 30,000 um, over a 12 month span, right? So it's like, they're definitely, they're, they, their intentions, I believe are good in terms of trying to help all the people that are losing a lot of money, which is a lot um, mm-hmm. all over the, the country. But at the same time, it's just, there's a lot of limitations now in terms of what you can and cannot do, right? So imagine like you want to be able to start investing, but the max is like $30,000, Right. Um, so it's like they're really just just uh, getting in the way, I guess you can say, of what we can and can't do, which is like for me, I'm very big on decentralization and, and us having freedom when it comes to our, our, our money. So it's like that is really just kind of pushing people the opposite direction versus working with you know individuals and leaders that are in this space. Right. Um, to see how we can create something that's beneficial for both. It's like they're really just kind of. Um, taking full control over that. So I, that is something that I am still watching very closely. I believe I'm actually going to be um, on a panel talking regulation as well. I think it's uh, next month. Um, so we'll definitely have more updates then. But yeah, that's something that I'm at the forefront. Um, also trying to see how I can get involved in terms of working alongside other organizations um, on an institutional level to see how we can create spaces and create services that are benefiting both sides as well. Did you see uh, the tussle between Trudeau and Polyev over cryptocurrency, uh, the promotion of Bitcoin, well, crypto, sometimes crypto, sometimes Bitcoin from Pierre Polyev? Have you seen that at all or any any thoughts around that? Do you think it'll come to the forefront of the conversation? Yeah, I was looking at a little bit of it, but yeah, I, I definitely definitely think that it's going to be a bit of a conversation there. I'm hoping that we can just, you know, get some of those conversations on the table um, because at the end of the day, like, like I said, Canada as a whole has just kind of been behind, right? Even if you think about the adoption in general, like Canada's really behind, the U.S. is just a little bit behind. And then like, you know what I mean? Everywhere else is just ahead of the curve, essentially. So I, I really am hoping to see a bit more adoption. Um, and uh, I really believe like when we think about like Ethereum, like Ethereum started here, <laughs> right here in the city. So it's like, how do we you know, use all the innovation and talent that we have here to really make sure that Canada is on the map, right? And also make sure that we are setting the setting the pace for everybody else versus like them really setting the pace for us. So yeah, it's an interesting conversation. I'm hoping that they, they put some and shed some light to that because I think it's really, really, really needed. I can agree with that. Um, I, I read that you're a basketball fan somewhere and I'm wondering who your favorite team is. And if you agree that Stephen Curry is the best of all time. Okay. So we are going to be good friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's literally my favorite player. Uh, as much as I love <laughs> Toronto Raptors, cause I support that's my home team. My you next team is Golden State always and forever. So yeah, love it. And, uh, yeah, Steph Curry is amazing. Clay Thompson. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see, uh, how they do this team here as well yeah very interesting I, i'm the exact same i you know got to support the home team but you know steph curry's playing i gotta watch he's uh he's something special uh you. you know what what's uh what's one book everyone should read i know you like to listen to audiobooks i think one of my absolute favorite books at least more recently is uh the five second rule by mel robbins i'm very big on like self-development um and so yeah that one is, is amazing it's really just about taking action getting things done not letting your mind talk you out of stuff, which it does all the time, really. So yeah, that's an amazing book. The audiobook is perfect um, because at least that way you can hear their voice, hear them actually, you know, um, have their emotions and, and hear their energy as they're kind of going through it. So that one's really good. Um, and then I like Grant Cardone has a lot of great content as well. 
Yeah, uh, I have some friends who like Grant Cardone, actually. Uh, he's very intense, very salesman-like. Uh, you know, like, you, you know, I remember a video of him telling some kid to start start washing cars, charging a hundred bucks, make your first, you know, couple thousand dollars. He's, he's very aggressive. Um, yeah, but definitely, exactly. de- definitely, uh, you know, motivational for a lot of people. Uh, Ashley, you're a traveler. Uh, have you been somewhere that uh, blew you away? Do you have a favorite spot? You know, what are maybe some of the more crypto friendly nations? Yeah, I love traveling for sure. Um, favorite spot that I've gone to so far would probably be Turks and Caicos, actually. Um, it's absolutely beautiful there. It actually was there. Um, I was on a cruise, actually. And one of the stops was Turks and Caicos. And literally, like, you'll be swimming in the, in the ocean and, like, you, the ship is literally right there, which is amazing. So, yeah, it was really, really nice. The water is beautiful. Uh, one of my favorite spots. And then in terms of, like, adoption for the crypto, definitely Miami is amazing. Mm-hmm. Miami is a vibe. Uh, so, always, I think I might be actually going to Miami um, towards the end of the year for Crypto Basel, right, um, that's happening in November. But, yeah, Miami is, is totally a vibe. There's a lot of adoption there as well. And then uh, yeah, I think those are some of the key places. Yeah, L.A., or San Francisco, I should say more specifically, is mm-hmm. really for like a developer type, type, uh, type vibe. But yeah, there's a lot of really great places. My first trip to the Caribbean was Turks and Caicos when I was, I want to say like grade eight or something. My mom, like the first big trip my mom brought me on was down to Turks and Caicos. And I played, I became like really good at uh, pool volleyball within like one week's time. I just spent the entire time in the pool, uh, just living my best life uh so yeah for those for those who don't know turks and caicos is near the bahamas in the caribbean ashley uh i'm gonna wrap it up do you have any final words of wisdom for myself and my listeners if not please let us know where we can follow you and learn more yes last thing i'd say is probably just buy the dip (laughs) i love it i love it not financial advice if i had to then yeah just you know just buy the dip don't worry about it. Um, and then, yeah, and thanks for finding me um, all over social media, YouTube, TikTok, everything um, at The Right Success. Or for the Academy, the Crypto Strategy Academy.com is how you can get more information. Ashley Wright, everybody, you heard her here on the Having Report by the dip. And we will see you next time. Thanks again for your time, Ashley. Thanks for having me. Thank you all for listening to the Having Report podcast. Please like and subscribe to the show. Check out the show notes below. Share it with a friend and we'll see you back next time.